Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com. That's www.comlexflashcards.com for complete Comlex resources in addition to additional lectures as well as a regular blog that will keep you updated as you prepare through medical school. Let's talk about sinusitis. Sinusitis is either an infectious or non-infectious inflammation or one of more of the sinuses. There's four paranasal sinuses each line with the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium and goblet cells, the frontal, maxillary, ethmoid, and sphenoid sinuses. The causes include a virus infection, it could be due to rhinovirus, or there could be a bacterial cause such as strep pneumonia or H. influenza. Here's an overview of the various paranasal sinuses. You can look at it and view the frontal sinus here, which is common, maxillary sinus here, and as well as other important anatomy components that you want to keep in mind as you look for a case in acute sinusitis. Here's another view. You can take a look at the maxillary sinus, the sphenoid sinus, the ethmoid sinus, and the frontal sinus. Here is an image showing a CT scan of a normal finding, and on the left you can look at various physical exam findings that you can carry out in order to check the sinuses. However, it's very important to understand what sinuses you're looking at in order to make the correct diagnosis. Here is another view on the left showing the waters view and on the right you see another CT scan showing you the frontal, maxillary, and the sphenoid sinuses. And again another view of the normal waters and towns view of the sinuses and here you can see a ladder view showing the normal sphenoid sinus. Let's review the major microbial agents causing sinusitis. If it's bacterial, it's mainly strep pneumonia or H. influenza, and viral causes include rhinovirus or influenza virus. The osteomiatal complex is the area under the middle meatus into which the anterior ethmoid, frontal, and maxillary sinus drain. Posterior ethmoids drain into the upper meatus. Osteomiatal complex is the functional relationship between the space and the ostea that drain into it. Viral sinusitis most often includes upper respiratory infections. It's short-lived, less than 10 days, caused by rhinovirus, and sinus mucosa as well as nasal mucosa is involved. Most will clear without antibiotics, and decongestants, nasal lavage, rest, and fluids are helpful. For bacterial sinusitis, um, acute bacterial sinusitis lasts for 4 weeks, subacute lasts for 4 to 12 weeks, and chronic lasts greater than 12 weeks. Recurrent acute bacterial sinusitis, the episodes lasting fewer than 4 weeks and separated by intervals of at least 10 days during which the patient is totally asymptomatic. And again, 3 episodes in 6 months is also a um, common marker for diagnosis recurrent acute bacterial sinusitis. Now the acute sinusitis imposed on chronic sinusitis is where patients with chronic low-grade symptoms experience an increase in mucus flow, change in viscosity and color or secretions. Keep in mind that new symptoms resolve but chronic symptoms continue. The complications of acute sinusitis can vary based on the sinuses. For example, a maxillary sinus usually is uncomplicated whereas ethmoid sinus you can have cavernous sinus thrombosis 40 percent mortality frontal sinuses can lead to osteomyelitis of the frontal bone cavernous sinus thrombosis um, epidural subdural or intracerebral abscesses or an orbital extension and again here you can see the orbital um, region swelling and here is a very nice diagram showing you the vasculature and the drainage of the various sinuses and you can see that the cavernous sinus and the sphenoidal sinus um, are closely interrelated and again the superior sagittal sinus is behind the frontal sinus and so it's very important to keep these in mind the anterior facial vein is in front of the maxillary sinus Again, complications of the sphenoid sinuses are rare, but usually they're misdiagnosed with grave consequences. You can have extension to the internal carotid artery, cavernous sinuses, pituitary optic nerves, and it's common to misdiagnose this which, with ophthalmic migraines, aseptic meningitis, trigeminal neuralgia, or cavernous sinus thrombosis. And 
again here is another CT view. This figure 1 shows sagittal and coronal sections of the sphenoid sinus. Keep in mind the sagittal section A shows the relationship of the sphenoid sinus to the cella tersica, cribriform plate and the nasopharynx. The coronal section of the posterior aspect of the sphenoid sinus shows its close proximity to the cavernous sinuses and the pituitary glands. And so this, in, this diagram is extremely important to understand because any damage to the nerves, these nerves can be caused by, again, a complication of sphen uh, sphenoid sinus. Keep in mind that cultures show a variety of opportunistic pa pathogens for bacterial chronic sinusitis. And also in fungal sinusitis is suspected, especially when a single sinus is involved. That was an overview of acute and chronic sinusitis. Please visit complexflashcards.com for complete complex board review preparation as you prepare for the complex level 1, 2, and 3 examinations. Also subscribe to our blog if you are a medical student, intern, or resident and you are in the process of obtaining your licensure because we post articles that will help you in your daily life. Good luck in your preparation and please visit complexflashcards.com.